Well, good morning, CSK family, and a special good morning to Glow, Shine, Illuminate, and all our under threes. How are you today? I hope you've had a good week. I know there's been lots going on in your family life. There's been a lot of baking, and I have been excited to receive some cake on my doorstep. Also, some rhubarb jam. I also know that someone in our church family lost their first milk tooth this week, so congratulations to them. And also, I know that lots of you have committed to doing the daily miles walk with your family, so I hope that's continuing to go well. So before we go any further, let's sing happy birthday. And although there aren't any children's names in here this week, there are two adults that you know very, very well. So let's get birthday bear. Warm up our vocal cords. La 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 la. Are we ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Rachel. And got stuck in the bag. Francis. Happy birthday to you. Give yourselves a round of applause, CSK. Fantastic singing as always. Now, before we launch into our talk today and our activity, I said I would reveal what was in my socks. So last week we were talking about Moses and how well God knew Moses. He knew everything about him. He knew that he was worried about the special job that God had given him to do. And God said, I will be with you. I am who I am. So here's my sock. Did you have a little guess? Have you had a little game about it? I really hope you played the game with your family as well. So there are five things in my sock all about me. So here's the first one. There's a bit of a clue. So the first one is... So I love sewing, but I've also been trying to do some knitting during the lockdown. I'm not the greatest knitter in the world. My mum has taught me a number of times how to do it, but I'm trying really hard to knit some rainbow bunting to go outside. So I like to be crafty as in sewing and knitting and all kinds of other things. So the next thing is, it's a rhythm egg. You may have seen these at school and I love music. I love the fact that we can sing and praise God through music, but I love to play an instrument. I like to sing around the house. I just love music. It brings me great delight. And also, when I'm feeling a bit miserable, you can also find a song that maybe cheers you up. So, music. Not a very big item. This is a cake case. Like a lot of you, I like baking. There are two more items. So, I said one of them might be to do with eating or drinking. And here it is. I love tea. I don't think I need to say any more than that. Cup of tea. My very last one, you may be able to see that it's got some wheels. <laughs> this is what I'd love to have. I don't have a Volkswagen camper van, but it's good to dream, isn't it? So many years ago, some friends bought me this, knowing that I didn't have the real thing. But it always makes me smile when I see one of these on the road. And it just makes me think of people being on holiday and travelling and enjoying the beautiful country that we have. And although at the moment we can't do that, it's good to be reminded that in the great outdoors, there's so much to, fun to be had. So those are my five things. You know a little bit more about me than maybe you did before. So today we are going to um, relocate. Have you got all your items ready, particularly the apron, because you're going to need it. So today's activity is not going to take place in here. So you need to come and join me in my kitchen. I'll meet you there. Great, you made it. Here we are in my kitchen. And as you can see, it's not the biggest room in the house. And there might be times in this little film that my head will disappear. But that's so that you can see what's going to be going on in this bowl. Anyway, let's get prepared for what we're going to make. Have you got your apron? Have you washed your hands and dried them? And tied your hair out of the way if it's going to get in your face? Great. So before we start getting our ingredients ready, we're going to prepare 
our baking tray. So we need a baking tray with a piece of baking paper or greaser paper on the top. Okay. You also need to make sure that you've put a cooling rack out ready for when your item comes out of the oven. And talking with the oven, make sure that you've turned it on to 220 degrees Celsius so it's warmed up ready for when you need to put the item in the oven. So 220 degrees. It's an adult to, to do that for you. So you will need a big mixing bowl and the first thing we're going to put in there is some flour because we're going to make some bread. Now you might be thinking, joy, when I've made bread before I've always used some yeast. Well that's the same for me. But at the moment it's quite tricky to get any yeast so we're going to make a bread that doesn't use yeast. So let's get started. First of all, we're going to use 250 grams of plain flour and I'm going to sieve it into my bowl. Don't worry if you haven't got a sieve. It's not a bit of just any lumps there might be. The next thing we're going to do is add some sugar and some salt. So, half a teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of sugar. I'm using some caster sugar, but if you haven't got caster sugar, use some brown paper sugar, that's fine. So, so far we've got flour, 250 grams of plain flour, half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of sugar. And we're now going to add in some baking powder. For this we need two teaspoons. It's helpful to have a knife to hand so that you can level up your teaspoon. So there's my teaspoon of baking powder but it's a bit too high so I'm going to go with the knife behind, away from me and level it off. So one teaspoon Those are all our dry ingredients. So we want to mix those together. We might use a whisk to do that or a fork. But I'm going to use my knife again. I'm just going to put that into my bowl, mix all my dry ingredients together before I add my water. There we go. Before I do it, I'm going to make sure I've got my board. So here's my board and I've put some flour on it ready. I'm also just going to have a little bit of spare flour in case I need to put some on my fingers. So let's put the water in. I've got 175 millilitres of lukewarm water, but I'm not going to throw it all in at once. I'm going to put half in, stir that in with my knife or fork if you've got one, and then I'm going to gradually add it until my dough comes together, but you don't want it too wet and too sticky. Here's half of it going in. I'm put my knife in, I just start to bring it all together. A little bit more. It's starting to get a bit lumpy now, and the flour is getting sticky. Add a little bit more. I'm now going to put my hand in to bring it all together into one big. A bit dry, so I'm going to put a little bit more water in just a tiny bit. The dough is beginning to come together. And 
we are. So that's how your dough will look. Get rid of the bowl and put it on your flour board. Before we put it in the oven, you want to knead it. But we don't want to be too heavy handed. It's not like play dough, you don't want to be too heavy handed. So make it into a ball and then you're going to push it away from you and then pull it back. So it's like you're folding over the flap of an envelope. So push away, bring it back towards you. Push away, bring it back towards you. And keep turning your circle of dough round as you go. As you do that, it becomes smoother. But as I said, don't be too heavy handed. But you'll see your dough coming together even more and this bit becomes smoother. Do that for a few minutes. If you're making it as a family, you might split it into some red rolls now and need one of them each. Right. How's it looking? Oh, it's much smoother. I'm just going to do a tiny bit more. I can feel it becoming springy because all the ingredients are beginning to work together. There it is, nice and smooth on the top, and I've made it into a circle. So I'm going to just press that down a little bit, then try and transfer everything to my baking tray. The last thing I'm going to do before I put it in the oven is I'm going to, you'll need to ask an adult to help you with this because you need to use a sharp knife to score it. So I'll ask an adult to do this for you. And scoring means you're going to make three cuts, but not all the way through. So one, two, three. Yeah, like that. And then one last push down, my three slits that I've made, and then it's going to go in the oven. It's going to go in there. For 25 minutes altogether. First 15 minutes at 220 degrees. So your adult has put it in the, in the oven for you. So you can do the washing up in the first 15 minutes and then ask your adult to turn it down to 180 degrees Celsius for the last 10 minutes. And then after those 10 minutes, ask your adult to get your loaf out and put it on the cooling rack. And then you can let it cool down before you eat it. And share it with your family. So I'm going to do my washing up and then I'll meet you back in our normal room. Well I've washed my hands and I've got the flour off the laptop so here we are again back in our usual room. So how's your bread looking? I hope it's come out okay and I hope you had fun making it. Mine's just cooling down over here but before we get to that let's look at today's reading and today's Jesus I am saying. So Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And we find that in John's Gospel. So we know there are four Gospels in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. And we find this in chapter six. So if you've got your Bible, go and look it up. So Psalms is in, about in the middle. New Testament starts about two thirds down. And we're looking at the fourth Gospel. So John chapter six, and I'm just going to read one verse. Verse 35. I am the bread of life, Jesus told them. He who comes to me will never be hungry. He who believes in me will never be thirsty. So what does that mean? What does that mean for us? Is he saying that we don't have to eat or drink ever again? No, he's not saying that. Of course we need to be well fed and we need to keep healthy. That's important in everyone's life to be looked after and nourished and ready to do what Jesus is calling us to do. What he's saying is that by knowing me, you know God. Now if I show you my bread, here it is. What do you think the first thing I wanted to do when it came out of the oven? You're right, I didn't want to let it cool down. I wanted to break a bit off and find some lovely butter and just have a piece straight away. Wouldn't it be amazing 
if we were as excited about knowing Jesus and spending time with him as I was about wanting to eat my bread straight away. Instead of hearing about the bread or thinking about it, I actually wanted to do something about it. Instead of hearing about Jesus or reading about Jesus, we actually want to know him because he wants to know us. And we see that throughout the whole of the New Testament that Jesus wants to know us. So as you share your bread with your family today, think about what Jesus said. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never be hungry. He who believes in me will never be thirsty. And that's true for you and for me. Now, I said there was going to be a, a different face on our film today, and we're going to end with that person. So Heather's come today. She's filmed a little film of the blessing that she signs for us when we sing in the church. May the God of hope. So just as we finished with a blessing last week, we're going to finish with a blessing this week. Here we go then. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him. As you trust in Him. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him. As you trust in Him. So that you